Hello again. This is Ian Mark from 70s Rock Photos. I'm also the author of Adventures of a 70s Rock Photographer. If you have been enjoying my videos, please subscribe to my channel 70s Rock Photos. If they bring back memories, leave a comment as I love reading them and so do others. I always say, you're not a true rock photographer until you have been attacked shooting a concert and you have photographed an artist coming down from the plane. I was attacked while shooting Queen in Calgary in 77. You can learn about that in my video, Queen Rocks Calgary's Jubilee. In this video, we are going to cover when I photographed Rod Stewart coming down from his plane in the Calgary airport. Then we are going to see shots of Air Supply who opened for Rod the next day. And of course, see many images of Rod Stewart promoting his record, Footloose and Fancy Free. Let's start off with his arrival at the airport and then we'll check out the venue. It was a cold day on October the 5th, 1977, when Rod's twin-engine plane touched down at the Calgary airport. You can see from these photographs that Rod was cold and bundling up as he walked off the plane with his musicians into the waiting limo. Luckily for him, it was just cold. That time of year, there could easily have been snow on the ground. The venue for the concert was the Calgary Stampede Corral a small house for a performer like Rod. It dates back to 1958 with a seating capacity of just over 6,400, essentially a glorified cement barn. It may be small, but it has hosted the Everly Brothers, The Who, Three Dog Night, Kiss, Queen, Rush, Six, Jethro Tull, and countless others. Until the 88 Olympics, it was the largest venue in Calgary. Opening for Rod was Air Supply. Here's the backstage pass they gave us for this concert. I met Graham and Russell in an interview with my boss from Music Express magazine before they went on stage. They talked about how they toured with Rod in Australia and that he invited them to open for him in North America. It was their big break to play in front of a totally new audience. Now it's time to move on to Rod Stewart. I photographed Rod about six months after Queen came to town. I remember that when Rod's concert was over, a writer from Music Express said to me, Ian, Queen was good, but I almost think that Rod just outclassed them in concert. Some may find those words to be blasphemy, but his concert was fabulous. Rod surpassed my expectations, and his band was excellent. It's easy to put on a great show if the audience is loving you. But at the beginning of this concert, even though Rod was putting out, he wasn't getting the feedback he wanted from the crowd. I was at the front taking pictures, and I could see he was displeased. So he turned to the audience and said, if you want us to put out up here, you have to put out out there. They got the message, and the audience did give him the applause he wanted, and the concert went on. He did all his favorites, including Maggie May, You Wear It Well, The Killing of Georgie. But for me, the band showed how great they were when they did You Keep Me Hanging On. Of all the versions of this song that I have heard, his has the best intro. You can see from these shots the energy he puts into his concerts and the love he has for football or soccer, whatever you want to call it. Rod has outsurpassed many other performers in the longevity of his career. He is still recording and touring because the man just loves to perform. I hope you enjoyed this video. I thought we would end with a few shots of the layout that Music Express gave me after the concert. You can buy either photographs or my book, Adventures of a 70s Rock Photographer, at my 70s Rock Etsy store, or at my 70s Rock Amazon store, or by going to 70srock.com. Be sure to check out my video, Rolling Stone Mobile Rocks the Bell Center. I take you inside the newly restored recording studio at its home at the Canadian Music Center. You will see the very limiters used by Led Zeppelin to record when the levee breaks. Thanks for watching.